you mentioned a couple of things that, that make me think that the passive approach is no longer applied. And you shared this with me before we hit record here that it's the active strategy that might be the winning one moving forward, which means I interpret that, Adam, tell me if I'm on the mark, is people have to be a little bit more accountable with their decisions in the market right now because there's there's too much uncertainty in too many places. Is that accurate? What 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 you take? Yeah, I think that's totally accurate. Um, and and th- there's obviously the uncertainty is is a big reason for that, and that that generally implies more volatility ahead. You know, I mentioned volatility started to rise. I think there's good arguments to be made for more volatility ahead. Um, in a volatile market, obviously, an active strategy works much better than a passive strategy. But but probably even just at a very high level, Jay. Um, back to my comments about valuations. Um, you know, when, when multiples rise, when valuation multiples rise, like PE ratios on stocks, essentially what you're doing is you are pulling tomorrow's prices into today, right? When you're doing that. Yeah. Um, and valuations have risen to such a rich level that, um, many in- analysts have been increasingly saying, look, um, based upon, you know, historic times, valuations got this stretched. The next decade had, subpar returns. And, you know, you've had people like um, John Hussman, you know, who's who tracks this uh, specific issue extremely closely and his charts for a good while now have been saying that the expected returns over the next 12 years are are likely going to be negative. Um, but, you know, some people might say, well, Hussman, he's, you know, he's a bear. I mean, John doesn't think he is, but people can you know, try to paint him with that brush. But then just recently, you probably saw that Goldman Sachs came out and said that it looks like uh, market returns should average about 3% for the next 10 years, which would be extremely disappointing versus you know, what, what folks have enjoyed largely following a passive strategy uh, in the past. So you know, when you get to a point like this where forward returns look like they're gonna be um, so uh, insufficient, uh, disappointing, um, it doesn't mean, let's say Goldman Sachs is right, and, and the market averages 3% for the next 10 years, right? It doesn't mean that it's just going to grow at 3% a year for the next 10 years. What that probably means much more, much more realistically is you're going to have some years where you get superior growth, a couple of years where you get some just gut wrenching drops in the market, mm-hmm. right? And that's where an active approach can really de- deliver a much superior return over time. Because if you're able to, you know, hedge and, 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 uh, lighten up and, and, um, take precautions when things get too stretched to the upside, you then have dry powder to deploy when things get stretched to the downside. So you can enjoy, you know, a maybe a several multiples better return with a, with, with a successful active approach than simply holding the market if we are indeed entering, you know, a decade like an increasing number of the analysts think we are. Quick break here, guys. Today's episode is brought to you by Copernico Metals. Now, regular viewers of my channel will be familiar with the entrepreneur behind Copernico. His name is Ivan Bebek. Now, although a young man in this business, Ivan's already created tremendous value for his shareholders in the past, namely with Caden Resources which he sold to Agnico Eagle and Keegan Resources, which became a mine now owned by Galliano Gold. Now, Ivan has surrounded himself with expertise from BHP, Newmont, and Barrick on his board at Copernico Metals. Check out copernicometals.com. Now back to the interview. One, one thing, so that's really fascinating. I didn't know that Goldman comment because you know, we hear individuals make that claim quite often in your and my circles, people mm-hmm. like Luke Roman and Grant Williams and, and, you know, very successful investors, but you, you know, that's a statement that is often disputed by the mainstream, right? And then you hear a platform like Goldman come out and say, look, actually what we're forecasting is an average of 3%, which might be 6% year one, 0% year two, exactly all over the map, uh, but averaging 3%. Um, however, defaulting, you can't really default to an active strategy the way you can default to a passive strategy, right? Because active by design requires a lot more decision making and therefore the ability to make mistakes, right? And so how armed do you think the average retail investor is to just like, okay, I'll get active and then make a a pile of poor decisions? What's the approach maybe that one should take in that scenario, Adam? So I'm so glad you asked this question because this is this is where I was going to bring it if you hadn't, which is um because of all the the interventions that have been happening in the markets for the past 20 plus years, I mean, really for 
pretty much the majority of your and my investing life, Jay, um, is we have, um, we have, the interventions have lent um, both an artificial tranquility to markets, uh, as well as um, an underlying bid that has just been a tailwind for asset prices, right? So the passive approach has worked really well, and it's been easy. It's been the easy button, right? What do you do? You go long, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. What else do you have to do? Not much else. Oh, buy the dips, right? So you go long and you buy the dips, and yeah. over time, the Fed and, and the central planners will take care of you, right? So it's been, you know, investing the way of the easy button. And um, we have we have trained investors. That's the way to do it. In fact, we've kind of punished them, right? For folks that took an active approach, a more conservative approach, they generally underperform the markets, right? You and I probably know lots of stories of people that, you know, got out, maybe even got out back in 2008 and still haven't been able to buy into the market, right? They still talk themselves out of it because of how high valuations are and then valuations go even higher, right? Um, So I think the central planners have done a huge disservice where they have provided a perverse incentive for people to not educate themselves on how to invest. They've, they've literally just learned to ride this artificial wave. So the question is, is what happens when and if that wave no longer works the way that it did, right? And then an active approach is required. I mean, to be honest, uh, I would say the majority of investors, especially on the retail side, but I'd, I'd lump the majority of professionals in there as well. They've got to go back to school, right? So you, you're absolutely right. You, you, you can't just jump into a sport that you haven't played and be excellent at it, right? You have to have your, you know, period, your boot camp of, of learning the ropes and getting mm-hmm. beat and making lots of mistakes and learning from those mistakes, right? So um, for most people, what I recommend they do is recruit the help of a professional, at least early on, um, at least as a sounding board. I mean, if you're a DIY investor and you've had a majority passive strategy, you're not willing to give the range yet to somebody else, but you haven't done much of this yourself. Mm. You know, pay somebody on an hourly basis, a fee basis, just on an hourly basis to say, hey, help me craft my strategy or hey, I'm putting together my strategy. Let me run it by you, right? But I think for most people, at least most regular investors, um, they don't necessarily have the time, the bandwidth. If they're honest with themselves, as we're talking about, they might not have the skill set yet, right? Yeah. So, you know, look over somebody's shoulder for an hour, uh, for a year or two, you know, have, have rather than focusing on, okay, what's the next best asset to put in my portfolio? Maybe focus on who's the best person to manage my money or at least a percentage of it so that I can get the benefit of their professional active management expertise. And then if I want to, I can start copying that, learning from it and clawing more and more of that back under my own DIY umbrella going forward. But I think the, um, I do think, Jay, that, that if, if this increasing number of analysts are right, uh, and we do have, uh, more turbulent, times in the market ahead of us, I think the collateral damage is going to be really high because uh, we have basically, you know, trained, forced the majority of our investing base to develop muscles that are going to be the wrong ones to use for what's ahead. And then the muscles they're going to need are going to be, you know, highly atrophied and unused. Uh, I think a lot of people are going to get caught unawares by that. 